o'clock. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, da, da, da. Okay, nice. here. Um, uh, let's see here. Now roll call. We have everybody present. Uh, um, missing just the one student representative. Do you know if she's going to make it yet? I don't know. She's at the volleyball game. Okay. Perfect. That's Part right. Of the they're team in BBE. Yes. Yeah, they're yeah. in BBE tonight. That's yep. right. So, um, uh, looks like we have no additions to the agenda. So, looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion. I have a motion a from second. Rick and a second from Cheryl. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, looks like we have nobody here for public comment. I'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, um, with you, Cheryl, if you want to okay. take over on the bills. Um, everything was pretty much normal. I just had a couple of notes that I wrote down. I have for the last two months because I missed the last meeting. But, um, uh, looks like we paid our final bill to the school exec committee connect okay. for our search for our superintendent that we are happy to have. Yay. <laughs> Um, let me see here. Um, their recab the recabling bills are coming in on both last month and this month. I think that's pretty much done now. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that, that will both be a buildings. welcome update mm -hmm. yep. to that both schools. Big, that was a big push. Um, And I think that was about it. That and the construction bills and odds and ends for the new build and countertops and things like that. Those were the only really note, real notes I saw. So it was all normal business. Okay. Um, and we do have the minutes uh, from the last meeting is uh, attached to. If anybody's got any questions on that, feel free to speak up. Otherwise, we'll go to you, Janelle, for uh, personnel items. Yep. Uh, so the, the some of the consent agenda items in there that you'll notice are um, there are some grant uh, some donations in there um, that are um, some of them are, are typical um, and then uh, the Lewis Industries is around the metal um, they've they've donated um, some metal for our students to do some practice welding which is always and we have done some purchasing and we've also they've also had some donations so um, there's also a donation for their their time. Um, because they donated some of their time for our sign and some of the work that they did in our building. So there's a receipt to that. Um, you'll also notice a receipt for um, um, the, uh, or a recognition for um, the Dick Dillon um, fund. And so you'll, you'll see that. Uh, we are expecting possibly some additional funds later on in the year, but that's the, um, where we're, what we've received thus far. Um, so as far as the hires and the information, um, you'll notice there are overloads. There are only two um, this fall, which is quite a bit less than has been in years past. Um, and then you'll notice the ECFE positions, and those are going to be by session. So you'll see those come through again. Um, we have a long-term sub for interventionist and a long-term sub for um, for a music position. And I just will tell you that two, those two, so the interventionist, we we're still looking to try to hire. We offered, that's a position that we offered and um, we weren't able to have the individual released from the contract. So we're trying to work through that position. Um, and then the other one um, for um, the elementary music, uh, we just had to, from the, she, she'll be eligible for a tier one license and we had to work through some licensing timelines so um, it's, you'll see her name come back again as well. Um, otherwise, you'll notice some um, positions that are student council positions, our final custodial position. Um, and then you'll also notice a couple of resignations. One is for a coaching position and the other is from the head cook position at um, the elementary. So those are, those are the consent agenda items that I wanted to just call out for you. I just have a, ahead, just a ahead, question about the Dick Dillon uh, mm -hmm. contribution. Mm -hmm. Is that hundred thousand? Is that a part of the endowment then, or is that separate from the endowment? Part of the endowment. That will be going to the endowment because it says general fund here, and I was wondering. Well, it's a, um, I believe. Well, it's the fund that, um, and I'll pull up the paperwork, Rick, to make sure that it gets in the right place because there, this was a very specific agreement right. that he had. 
um, with, and I believe it was with um, uh, Mark Dingman, I think was on the contract. Mark, is that his first name? Yep. Mark. Yep. Yeah, former board member. Yep. Um, so he was on uh, the agreement that of kind of where the month, the funds were gonna go and what they're gonna be. They're very specific. Right. So um, they are, they're targeted for a very specific use. Well, we had that one endowment we we're trying to build up to a million dollars. That started with that family. And that's separate. That is separate. So okay. he mm -hmm. contributed to that fund, but then he also started a fund that was directly with the school, not through community giving. Oh, okay. Okay. So this so, hundred thousand is for. So this is so his the agreement. <clears throat> what he had set is that um, his wishes were to have a, really a focus on career and technical education, and having opportunities um, for. Uh, innovation and and programmatic expansion and things like that. And so um, the the funds that were here. So like you you'll think of um, and and I and I um, I know that he had committed to a set number of dollars prior to his passing. Um, so it was all just kind of it flowed through and there was that was a fund just within the general budget ledger. Um, the endowment is part of the community foundation, um, the, but that's a the community foundation has a separate goal that this isn't part of. Okay. And so um, this is where you know as as um, things kind of get settled, we'll learn a little bit more about what that annual ends up being for us. But I know that there has to be some um, um, some established timeline to look at, do some look backs for earnings and things like that. So that would um, be my question is where I'm just curious where that 100,000 will go right now so that it's uh, I was going to get piggyback off that yep. is if you know, where that goes and, and can that be is that just a line item in the budget then okay. that can be maintained and if years you don't spend it you just save it for years that you might need to spend more than that. My okay. the the way I understand it is that this was not intended to just be a general fund expenditure so it's, uh, yeah. it's really targeted yeah, for career tech ed and if we don't use it it's going to sit there and continue to stay in a designated fund correct actually that's just thinking because there, there could be years where we don't need to spend correct right the total donation amount but then there's years that maybe in the future we're going to have to replace a bunch of equipment and stuff and we're going to need to spend more than so correct it is a, a per se a budgeted amount but towards a specific that's correct yep I guess the other thing I would add is if there's any way that that could be put somewhere where it might add a little, get some oh, interest on it or something. Sure. I'll ask Carrie to take a look at that. Okay. Right, if it's combined with his other portion that he set up directly with the school. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, usually those endowments, it's based off of a rolling average over like three years, and it was like three to five percent. Yeah. yeah. Depending on obviously the market. And I do know that um, that this was like for this year. Um, this was these were funds that um, they that were anticipated, and so this year it doesn't sound like there's going to be a need to carry anything over or anything like that. Um, it was because this was my understanding is that there was kind of a, an understanding between the school district um, and Dick prior to his passing about a set number of funds that came forward, um, and now now that we just his estate is processing where we will see where that ends up coming forward after the full amount is invested and then we'll have a more okay. predictable amount so i just want to recognize dick for a second that he's really invested a lot in the school and i mean i'm i think the board the school district is incredibly grateful mm -hmm. um, he could have given his funds to anywhere and he picked you know, the district as one of his recipients and I just think that's an incredible gift and I appreciate yeah. what he's all done for our school district. And I, and I also want to honor, you know, I think he would be pretty uncomfortable with all this recognition, you know, from what I understand and, and for him to know that we are so grateful is, is important. So. Um, the only other question I had is the interventionist, uh, yep. interventionist yep. Uh, position. Uh, is there a possibility that to the school year, there could be another change with the, higher that we were going to have that they their position could be found and is that kind of a hope is there a conversation in that direction anyways that we continue to ask okay yep um the, the the we continue to hope that that becomes the case okay 
Yep. Otherwise, are we just looking long-term south for this school year and then re repost. repost it in the summer? Okay. Yep. Um, I would prefer to post early so that we can secure prior to summer because I think that's part of um, what just happens. Okay. Yep. Well, we're looking for a motion to approve extent agenda as presented. So move. Motion from Bruce. A second. A second from Maggie. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, communication items, Janelle, back to you. All right, so a couple of things I did. Um, I thought I had um, the strategic plan in there. Maybe I didn't, but I just, that's, I, I wanted to just spend a couple of minutes um, just kind of giving you all some updates about um, what some things that. It's up top, Janelle. It is up top. Okay, sounds good. <clears throat> so um, if you want me to pull it up, I, I, the, I just wanted to make sure you had it if you would like to reference, but couple of things I just wanted to walk through, um, kind of those core three items that I really try to keep at the forefront of some of the work that we're doing and how um, how decisions I'm making or um, the, the I guess the direction that we're moving isn't really in alignment with the strategic plan. Um, the administrators are really doing a, a nice job right now keeping some of the focus and keeping the work on that first core area of, you know, there's a couple of things like you'll notice um, the uh, family groups and at the elementary, which are, uh, it's a really exciting concept. It's so forward thinking and it's a great way to, to really build some, some community and union with our kids. And I know that Mary talked about that at our last meeting, um, but that is, that's a really cool way to think about how we, we grow socially and emotionally with our kids and building some connection with them. Um, the other thing that I, I you'll notice, um, probably in some of the some of the work that comes forward is um, our secondary staff. So we had our first um, uh, in-service day on the 24th of September, and that really was kind of, it was split twofold. Half of it was in-service and the other half was work time. And the in-service time for the, um, for the elementary and the middle school was around the letters um, initiative. Again, that's 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 literacy training. It's teaching teachers how to teach reading in a different way, um, and it's really it's really been a foundational shift for some of our staff. And it's just it's really good work, and they're putting in a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of energy. Um, and then uh, the secondary staff really spent some time, and this kind of feeds into the communication piece as well. Um, really streamlining some of the syllabus that, that the high secondary uh, teachers have and the websites that the classrooms are, um, all host so that there's some consistency so that parents are receiving kind of clear and concise information from that secondary staff so that um, they had really good discussion about kind of foundational pieces around like um, how are we communicating our grading? How are we communicating expectations? So it's it was some good good work to streamline the communication that took place on that September 24th in service day. Um, the other piece that I wanted to uh, visit with you a little bit about in relation to goal two, um, you'll notice that I put out quite a few coffee and a chats. Um, I've had um, anywhere from 470 to 741 views on my little videos, which is kind of embarrassing because <laughs> I watch back and I'm like, oh my gosh, but I, it, the mission is, the, the, the purpose is, it's serving a purpose. People are watching and that's really what I think is important is having an opportunity and a platform that people can go back to and to see that information. Um, to that point, we worked really hard to, um, I'm gonna make sure that everybody has seen, I am gonna pull up um, our website, just so you can, um, whoop, it's gonna. It goes, my uh, keyboard is flopping on my other one, but. So you'll, um, you may, may or may not, not have noticed, but um, on the website, we did put our, um, our operating referendum information. Um, the intention here was to be um, concise, clear, and just very direct. So um, uh, one of the things that I, I think is really important is for some of our messaging and some of our verbiage, to just be consistent. So these you'll also recognize have come across through um, through social media in different posts. 
Um, and I, I do want to just take a minute to acknowledge and recognize Miranda because she just put a lot of effort and energy into having some nice, consistent. And it feels it feels to me like branding. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really important thing for a district to have that recognition like, oh, that's a Painesville deal. Right. So um, in, on the website, again, you're going to notice you'll see these things come across in a number of um, a number of venues. Um, the first coffee talk, I just talked about the basics. Uh, we have one, I think, tomorrow morning. <laughs> I have a, we have one tomorrow morning. Um, and then we're going to just start breaking down kind of the next steps of each of these slides, right? But again, it's just making sure that we're, we're providing consistent information so that people have a place to go and, and really encouraging people to ask questions. Okay, so um, that's one of the things that, that we were really working hard to make sure it was consistent. And so I wanted to make sure that you all had an opportunity to see the website and have that information. And then my intention too would be here, um, if you have questions that come to you and they're, um, we're seeing some common themes, this will be a good landing spot for us to put it so that people can consistently, because if they're asking, you know, if they have a question, chances are somebody else does too. So. Um, really just trying to be mindful of having a common landing space so people can get information, okay? Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just um, kind of bring to your attention is, um, so as I've been preparing information for, um, for, the, um, for our October board meeting, kind of analyzing from a financial perspective, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of bring back kind of a, a concept of like the three year focus. You know, when we um, when I am looking at preparing from I want to make sure that I get information out to the board, but I also want to make sure that I give you um, accurate information when we get to, you know, when we're trying to predict from like a birth, one year old, two year old, there's I mean, our, yeah, there's some data out there, but it's it's not nearly as consistent as you know, our five-year-old data is pretty good. Our four-year is okay, and our three is eh. But you get beyond that, and it really gets difficult. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that as I'm preparing that information, I think that's gonna be something that we wanna be mindful of as we project forward, um, thinking about what the next couple of years look like, is that there's, there's a lot of variability in that three-year-old data and the four-year-old data because um, families are really fluid in that time frame. Um, and they're also not, as three-year-olds, they start coming to preschool. You know, we'll start to have some of that screening information, um, but it's not, not nearly as consistent. So um, that was the only other piece I just wanted to let you know as I'm kind of prepping that and pulling that forward. We are preparing for our audit next week. And so the auditors will be on site and then um, gathering all the information that comes out to you in November. I think we do ours in November. Present present it in November or December? It has to be presented in December. In November. Yeah, yeah, December. Yeah. We just had the one meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yes. Okay. So those I just wanted to um, kind of bring you up to speed on some of the work that, that I've been doing that kind of supports the, the strategic plan and bring you up to what my thought processes were on some of these things. So um, that's that's what I have for my administrative report today. Uh, committee organizational reports. Um, see West Central Ed. Then policy. Policy. Um, I know uh, Stearns County Collaboration. We met uh, this last week, and that was kind of business as usual, financial numbers and quick approvals, and it was a normal, pretty quick and easy, painless meeting. So. Um, West Central Ed. I was there in place. Um, Maggie had a. a um, a conflict and it was a very very typical meeting um probably most of note was the approval of the joint powers agreement you know that that was approved by all um, all members um so that was the west central ed um c anything with it was pretty typical we had some speakers i think somebody from senator tina smith's office and then we had some pollsters from morrison leatherman talk about us kind of about the outcomes that which is funny because the data is already 30 days old so it's like no 
It's a lifetime in politics. So, um, and then we talked very briefly about the Neil Kashkari equity education amendment, and then the C is going to really going towards that equity movement this year. Obviously, they didn't have time to focus much on that with the last session, but um, they're going to really work on that equity side. And then um, I think that constitutional amendment comes not this year, but next year, as I understand. So they'll be really working towards uh, making that happen, or at least publicizing the Neil Kashkari amendment. So. Can I piggyback something on that, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that um, MASA also has been moving toward is um, a real a focus on equity um, across the organization. And um, yesterday I had the opportunity to hear Justice Page and um, Neil Kashkari talk through the constitutional amendment um, proposed. And um, there's, as, as an organization of superintendents um, and just really uh, educational leaders, we've just posed a lot of questions to really understand what the impact would be and how that would, you know, some of the unintended consequences and concepts, you know, we really want to, you know, have, so, so there was, there's been really good discussion through my professional organizations as well, in addition to see, um, but just to understand some of the big picture, um, again, asking questions and trying to understand before we kind of take a position on it, so to speak. Uh, policy committee? No. We'll have the first view at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to say it's been helpful being on a schedule because yeah, it's, I right. think it's a lot easier kind of going through in a with a process. Mm -hmm. So going through the second time, it's just made it a lot more efficient. Right. We're dealing with things we dealt with three years ago. Yes. So it's like it's not right updated. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember this. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be a nice procedure. Yes. Uh, I'll speak to negotiations just briefly. As we know, we'll have a tentative agreement here um, on further down on the, the meeting tonight. Um, we do have tentative agreements uh, uh, in line to potentially with uh, custodial and then uh, teachers. Is, we're at a really good spot with teachers right now. There's not uh, a finished tentative agreement, but we're, we, we feel like we're pretty much right there with the teachers already as well. So, um, and then uh, pairs, we've had a couple of meetings that get shifted around a little bit, but we'll. Uh, we, we feel pretty confident with Paris that we'll be kind of wrapping that up as well. So just uh, a couple groups left and then we'll be, we wrapped up with the negotiations. So. And then student representative, your turn. Homecoming week, so a lot going on. I may or may not miss something. Uh, yesterday was homecoming coordination. Um, Sophie Schrader and Tabaza Juma are our queen and king. Um, today is cross country at home. Volleyball is at VBE. Tomorrow is Ironman and Powder Puff. That will be outside. Not for, I don't know. I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> okay, Thursday is going to be, that's where I definitely lost it, volleyball at home. It's going to be at ACGC. And Friday is obviously the football game. And that will be Pet Fest at the Baseball Diamond earlier in the day. And it'll be against Ralton. I think I got it all. Yeah. Very Sounds nice. awesome. And school year's going well so far. We can get yeah. a good start with those students. Great. How are students liking the connect time? Like, what are you hearing feedback? Um, the best part is with all the meetings for NHS and student council and stuff. It's not during lunch or before school or after nice. school, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And extra study time or activities and stuff like that is really convenient. And no one complains about shorter class times. <laughs> <laughs> Today was twin day. Did you see a lot of twins in the hall? Ah, uh, no. That's no. usually one of the least popular ones for dress up days, but I was just wondering. Yeah. Maybe one to update next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, old business, let's say we have nothing on the old business. We want a new business. Uh, preliminary pay 2020 levy, 2022. Yep. Levy. Yep. Go ahead, Janelle. Uh, so, a couple of things that I just, um, you'll notice the numbers in um, with the percent change. So, what we are um, recommending to do, and it's, it is actually, Pretty interesting because um, MDE will set the set the numbers as of October first, and even from the point that um, this this document was published to what I when Carrie and I were looking at this information today, they are different. And the reason we do certify for the maximum amount is really to allow so that we can make if, if there is a change in what MDE enters, we're not held to a lower amount. We get the whatever amount is necessary. So um, the other piece just to be reminded of is that this is um, this would be if uh, the as the levy 
as the referendum is approved, it would be revised. Um, and then we come back and, and adjust this again. So just so that you all know, you know, we will hopefully see this again, but it is set, you know, from, um, it is set at this point in time. Part of the reason you do see the, um, the decreases um, is because our student enrollment is down and our levy dollars are obviously based on uh, ADMs. So that's one of the things to take into consideration. Any other questions about the levy certification process? Uh, looking for a motion to certify the amount uh, allowable for the 20, pay 2022 levy as presented. I'll go ahead and make that motion. For a second. A second. A second from Bruce. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Truth and taxation all right, so we need to set our truth and taxation meeting. Um, so one of the things that I, I looked forward kind of on and the way this has been done in the past, it, it appears to me as though um, you typically hold this meeting in the December meeting. Um, I, my understanding is that it could be essentially one of two days held prior to the board meeting or in a separate session. Um, so how, can you just maybe describe for me how you've done it in the past? Did it, I, it looks as though it was done pri just prior to. That's what I thought. I thought we were coming in like half an hour early, and then we would have been there. Well, meeting last year. Well, last year was in the evening. Last yeah, it was six o'clock. Yeah, it was. We met with the students in the afternoon at yeah. the meeting. Then we had. Well, oh, that's back. what we did last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah. At six o'clock. Yeah. So the one because on the calendar on the school board calendar right now there's a one thirty meeting mm -hmm. and yeah. a six o'clock. That's because it's the student meeting. It'll be exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have the meeting with all the students. Okay. And then we met at six for this. Just for this. Yeah. yeah. Was there a reason that we couldn't just set the meeting ahead of the student meeting? And because we, we want the public, I think, uh, I think more availability for the public to be here. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to remember why. Yeah. Just, I think that's why we made it at six yep. so the public could attend if they wish. Correct. Yep. Which? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling here. That caveat. Uh, the point is, they don't want to make not, not, that they, <laughs> right to, not that they yeah, wouldn't. Uh, be open. <laughs> it's important for it to be open. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm okay with that as well. <laughs> so, am I seeing that? Well, and I, um, I see that this should be um, Tuesday, December. Miranda, can you check that date on there? Um, I think it should be Tuesday, December 15th. I think so. Um, it is 14th. Yeah, 14th. Okay, so the last year must have been the 15th. So we'll just update that. Oh, sir, that's the 2022, 2021. Um, and um, and that would be um, um, the gentleman from um, uh, PMA will be here yes. to present that information as yep. well. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, that for a motion. So move. We got a motion from Bruce to schedule the truth taxation uh, uh, taxes hearing for taxes payable in 2021 for December 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom. A second. And a second from Cheryl. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Lane do we also, do, we yeah. also do the um, evaluations at that meeting before or after the truth and taxation? I feel like we had three meetings that day. Uh, I didn't. I don't. So when did we do that? that? Did that we do it at the one thirty meeting just after? Like I just the last thing on I the think, agenda. Yeah. Because it's a closed meeting. Yeah. And so yeah, we just closed right. the meeting after the student. Yep. Because I feel like we had. I guess it what we did on the same day, but I'm not. And I'd, I'd just soon do that in the afternoon yeah, versus yeah, the evening. Right. Nope. At that point. So. Just add that to the agenda for the one thirty meeting is a closed session for the review. Yeah. Yep. Lane changes. All right. Let's see. All right. So uh, you will take a. Uh, you'll just notice that there are uh, lane changes that have been presented. Um, everything that has gone has come forward has had approval, prior approval, and met the standards. 
Um, so my recommendation would be to approve the lane changes as presented. I make that motion. I have a motion from Rick to a second. second. Oh, Rick's in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> second, second from Jacob. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carry. And we're done with the food service tenant agreement. Okay. Um, would you like me to walk through yes. and highlight the changes? Okay, so a couple of things that I um, I will just um, point out to you as we kind of come through. Um, this is, there are some, some components that are different and new. Um, on page six of the master agreement, you'll notice a school nutrition association certification. Um, so this is an area where um, it, it's similar to a, um, like our maintenance custodian where they have a certification for a boiler. Um, it's, it's a similar certification, but it's for, for our food service workers. Um, this is, it would be a cost that is, um, they, they pay for the certification. Um, we would pay for their membership if they want to be members there. And then if the, if the employee leaves, we retain the membership with the district. Um, and then the employee has an opportunity um, to um, increase their rate of pay by completing the, cert the certification. Um, you'll also notice uh, an incentive pay. So this was intended to uh, one of the things that we've talked a lot about are things like the um, compensatory, um, the, the free and reduced lunch applications and how that generates a significant amount of funding for us. So this is one of those areas that as a for instance, we'll be able to, to increase the percentage of applications that are completed because our food service workers have a very, very, I mean, that's like they're interacting with families all the time. And so it's an opportunity to, um, to look at some, um, some incentive based on setting goals. And those goals would have to be approved by myself with the, the workers. Okay. This training that you're talking about, is mm -hmm. this a time, time consuming? Where do they get the training? There are, most of the trainings are online um, and they can do it outside of their, their work day. Um, the, there's a variety of, it, I, it appears as, as I was looking at the, um, the certification, I think there are a number of trainings that they could go to. Um, like, uh, many of the colleges will offer like a food service class. Um, they can pick up a, it's kind of like the food safety, you know, that are offered through like Ridgewater or, um, uh, St. Cloud Tech Community College. So there's just lots of those types of pieces, but there is a really significant online presence as well. Okay. Uh, you'll notice on page seven that um, the district contribution for year two in health insurance went up to 72.50. Uh, year one remained the same. Um, the next piece I want to um, highlight is on page 12, the leave provision for the discretionary leave became permanent within the master agreement versus um, just having a memorandum of agreement. So that has been incorporated into the contract. On page 15, you'll notice a change to the holiday structure. Um, prior to, in, in the previous um, master agreement, it was really kind of prorated based on the number of hours they worked per per year, how many they got, and it was, um, so what, what the district offered and, and kind of negotiated through and tentatively agreed to was uh, just seven holidays that they get. And if they work a summer contract, a full summer, like they're, they sign the summer contract not subbing, then they would get the 4th of July as well. Um, this would be uh, subject to the number of hours that they traditionally work. So if they're a four and a half hour employee, they're going to get paid for four and a half hours on that holiday. Okay. Um, on page 16, there was just an added element of um, um, in the event of e-learning days, um, they'll have an opportunity to come in and work, um, report to work on an in-service day. Um, so that they could make up their hours. The intent here was not to have employees lose pay um, when school was closed, uh, but um, really trying to also then take into account that that's an opportunity for us to do some training with them as well. Okay. Um, the other area that I want to spend just a minute talking through is actually going to be the very last section, page 25. <laughs> So you're going to see the salary schedule. So this took a lot of discussion and a lot of um, 
really just conceptual dialogue. So what you'll notice is we have shifted away from steps and lanes, uh, steps within the, the schedule for our food service workers. So there are three, there are four classifications and you'll notice just a starting wage for um, year one and year two. Now the intent here was really to um, discuss and understand that we need to have a competitive starting wage to attract workers that might choose to um, go to one of our local competitors just for, for that hourly work. So the intention there is to have a, a, an attractive base wage and then you'll notice the, that the longevity schedule has been expanded. So the intention there is that if people stay with us, then that's where they get their, their added, I guess, their added um, incentive to stay. Um, we felt that this was a, um, this group uh, really is a, a group that we compete with many of our other um, employment agencies in, in our local community, and it was important to have a start and a competitive starting wage. So uh, that being said, you'll you'll notice that there are some individuals um, that have some ex exceptions. the The reason for that was because um, as we make this transition, um, it was important to hold people harmless and that they wouldn't lose pay. And and for the individuals that were identified, they would have lost um, in a salary had they gone just to the, the starting wage um, because they've been, usually it's because they've been with us for a while. So it was an important concept to keep, make sure that our, our existing employees were taken care of, but we also are mindful of how to attract workers as we have people, uh, as we have openings. Um, so those are a couple of the main, um, the main conceptual um, pieces that came through the uh, food service negotiations process. Are there any questions for me or the committee? I'll just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the committee, I'll just comment that, yeah, Janelle said it, was, it, it took a lot of work, it took a lot of effort to try to get us to a point where we could be competitive with them um, and, and get more on a competitive wage and then this allows us as well as the food service workers in future negotiations to uh, to look at what competitive wages are going to be out in the marketplace and adjust those starting wages as needed from that point moving forward instead of trying to balance the steps and lanes and having numbers that maybe don't really make any sense to start somebody at in the future. Um, and and if there's if we have I feel like if we have a starting competitive starting wage in the future um, with those groups, we're still sitting at a competitive wage, then it's just some negotiations with the current employees to determine what those wages should be and, and be able to maintain that competitive starting wage. So that's kind of that thought process. So under these um, guidelines, no one that is currently working there will lose money, but they will actually get a pay raise. Um, so everybody at, in some ways got, there were some that got more than others um, just because of when you have a structure, a structural change, but nobody, um, nobody like got nothing um, and nobody lost. Okay. Yep. Is that grammatically correct? Nobody got nothing. <laughs> but yes, Plus I mean, that was the conceptually, well, got something. yeah, <laughs> the, conceptually it really was important for us to, to understand um, how to, I mean, this was, this was a big shift. I mean, it, it, for, for school employees to move away from steps, a step schedule is a big concept change. And so we really wanted to be mindful of in doing that, that we, uh, we were not, um, we, we weren't harmful in, in any employment relationship. So. I look for a motion to approve the 2021 through 23 food service employees master agreement. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion from Rick, second from Cheryl. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Appointment of election judges. This will be a roll call. So you'll, if you take a look at the uh, exhibit attached, it is, um, this is a pretty standard process when we are nearing an election and you will uh, notice that there are 
four individuals identified um, to be um, election judges on our November 2nd election. Looking for a motion. I'll make that motion. We've got a motion from Bruce. A second. A second from Cheryl. On um, a roll call. Miranda's ready. Sorry. You're fine. Bruce. Hi. Cheryl. Hi. Maggie. Hi. Jake. Hi. Thomas. Hi. Rick. Hi. Uh, motion is passed. I'll give Miranda a minute here. We're running pretty quick. Uh, we're at the point now. We're just uh, reviewing a meeting. So, yeah. um, so the only thing I just want I would like to, to point out are two things. Um, one, there was an added um, uh, um, continuing education um, meeting yep. that was added for tomorrow, next day. Uh, uh, let me just a moment. It is, the continuing ed is Wednesday the 29th at 3.15. And then um, we are going to reschedule the climate committee meeting. So 7 a.m., you can hold off on that. Okay. Um, we are gonna, we need to expand our um, circle back with all the other individuals that were part of that meeting mm -hmm. to uh, make sure that it's, it's a little bit more robust. So no meeting this Friday. So you do not need to meet here at 7 a.m on Friday. Friday. Will it be this Friday, just a different time? No. Okay. Nope. And I, I did notice when I went back that the preference was for an evening meeting, um, for that meeting, and so we'll look at that um, to, because I, as I was looking at the, commu the um, committee members, it looks as though there's um, community members in addition, mm -hmm. so I want to make sure that we're mindful of that. Friday evening would not be good. Friday evening would not be good, especially <laughs> on our homecoming Friday. I don't think we have great turnout, so, okay. But otherwise, those are the, um, it's, it's a busy couple weeks, um, and there's a lot happening right now. Just uh, now looking ahead to the community forum, mm -hmm. is the expectation that we'll all be there? What has been your past practice we'll there. <laughs> with, um, and I guess I would also like to say if anybody wants to do the, the town hall with me on, um, on Monday, um, it's not in as a committee meeting by any What time? Time? Uh, it is at six o'clock on Monday night. So I'm, I'm really intending to just walk through um, the, um, just to walk through I, the I mean, slides. As of now, I should be able to. Okay, cool. So if anybody else wants to, obviously we won't make a quorum, but if anybody else wants to as well, yeah. or, uh, or instead. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think having board members there would be appropriate. Sure, and, and I'm, I, that will take as long as it takes to walk through the slides. If people are commenting to be able to answer questions, um, so it, it could be as as quick as fifteen minutes, and it could be as long as a half hour. So it's hard to know. But um, but for the forum, um, the community forum, and you you will notice that that is going to take place in the high school seminar room. Okay. So there will be signs up to bring people down to the seminar room instead of the auditorium, um, because um, the there was a there's preparation for um, our ball play taking place. So we're going to meet down here. So it'll be good. That was Monday the 4th? 25th. Well, oh. you're, yes, you, if you're going to be on the green screen with me, yes. Love it. Monday the 25th. So the forum is Monday the 25th mm -hmm. before, yes. And we have another C meeting, I think, on the 26th, too, in Kimball. Oh, I think. Uh, no, the town hall, though. The town hall, yeah. which you just volunteered to do with me, yeah. is on Monday, October 4th. Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's what, I remember the 25th, like, wait a second. I, I thought it was the 4th. But, so, yes. Yep. yep. I, yep. yep. Well, you were concentrating on that. I was, <laughs> yeah. By their half a great All right, town yeah. hall safe. I'm just going to it for now. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, obviously we're still going to look forward to uh, uh, scheduling that uh, para negotiations. Correct. I noticed that wasn't on here, but obviously we don't have a date for that yet. So that is correct. I have not heard back yet. Um, 
Okay. I, so on the how we handled the town halls and all that, mm -hmm. we were just always very careful that you were our voice. Sure. When we were there, we were just present. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the ones I went to first time around, yeah, you're in on the conversation before you actually get to presentation and some yeah. of that. But when it actually came to the questions and answers, it all went through you. So we didn't have multiple things going on all the time. And I think that makes a lot of sense. It was just, and yeah. we've all been there. Yep. So mm -hmm. everybody's pretty much familiar with it. We're just very careful yep. that we're not having mixed messages all over. Right. And, and again, like I said, um, if you all are getting questions, um, you know, there, just please go ahead and submit those so that I can kind of keep track of it. And if there's information that people are, are having questions about or they don't know, um, I want to just be really mindful to get information out to people in a timely manner. So just let me know if you if you are getting questions. Anybody hearing anything so far? No. It's very no, quiet. No. That's what very I quiet. have. And I would have thought we would have questions by now. Uh, but maybe everybody's. I, I so feel with this is an issue, there, there's probably a little bit of two things going on. Um, and obviously, it's been in the paper. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not yeah. like it's not news to everybody. Right. But I. Um, I feel that it's again, you know, we're a, a pretty open, honest board. People understand, yeah. to, you know, yeah. that, that we're going to be transparent with everything that we say and do. And there's probably not a lot of concern. Um, students are back in school without masks right now, and as of now, you know, people are happy and just trying to get back yeah. to normal life. Yeah. And so I think that there's a little of that going on. And then I, 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 I'm curious though, as we get closer to. The middle of October, and we have more information come out. We have postcards to the mail, or, or whatever we have. That if we get more questions at that point in time, it's a little closer. But I think, think you know, the combination just, of just people being just seemed a little yeah. quieter than I would have thought. Yeah, people, Not that people being happy right, right now, and 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 people uh, and yeah. just waiting for that that day to roll around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think we were pretty open when we were trying to get the mm -hmm. building updates that. Remember, we've got a referendum yeah, coming up. Don't forget. Since we've been on the board, that's been the common been yeah. conversation. conversation that's had. Is, is, yep, that's going to happen. So. Well, generally, anybody who watches the meeting, they'll always say, you guys talk about a lot of stuff there, don't you? And before we had um, this going on, people would say, what is this I read in the press? And I'd always say, okay, they're condensing for you a five-minute read mm -hmm. on what we just spent an hour and a half on, yeah. and then we had the recording, but it wasn't broadcast so so well. Mm -hmm. And so then I just bring up the the topic that we were talking about, let people watch it, and yeah. then we would talk about the issue, mm -hmm. which generally the conversation wasn't much there anymore because they understood that. And a lot of times when we have conversations, we're approaching it from a lot of different angles. We don't always have the same ideas, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you're right. We, we get a lot of that off of that. I think people can see it. Yep. People that, do watch. That's all great, but they let's do. not take it for granted. I know. No. That's right. No. <laughs> no. no. We need to get the, we, we need, I, I do worry about complacency. We need to act like yep. it might not go. <laughs> so we need that. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, we need people to, we just need people to, to be active and vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That looking for a motion to adjourn. Move the board do now adjourn. Right, motion from Jake. I'll second. Second from Cheryl. Any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried.